uh, around, I think I went through hermitage experiences where I went off and lived in the woods with the course book. Uh, I went through one of those like around 1987, 88, uh, in the woods of Kentucky, where I was catching rainwater with those big tarpaulins and uh, experimenting with different things. Like, I thought I would really go after the ego and uh, I would just have a very simple diet of bread and water. Uh, and so I experimented like Henry David Thoreau with different kinds of bread to make and uh, the pancake one. Uh, the pancake was the easiest to make. But the ego revolted big time. It was like, oh no, you think you're just going to pull away from me with a simple little diet of bread and water? <laughs> it's like, the ego's like, oh, I'm more formidable than, than that. There are mystics and saints that have come at me for centuries and try to make a dent. But the ego is like gravity. It's like this real heavy sense of guilt and shame and pain and death that seems to grip the mind that believes in this world. So I had a hermitage experience there. And then later on, I think around 1995, I think it was, I had a hermitage experience. First time, I really couldn't get very deep into meditation. Ego was I think, laughing at me with my meditation practices because I was very much like a beginner at many things, and the ego was like, "Oh, you aren't going to escape me. You think you, I've got chatter going now? I'll crank it up a few uh, notches for you. You're not even going to get down to that stillness." But I just listened to Jesus, and Jesus said, "That's fine. Uh, you need to be of service. I will direct you how to be in service." And as you follow my directions, I will wash away your resistance to love, your resistance to the light, in a very natural way. You don't have to fight the ego and, and do battle with it. Just listen and follow. Be very intuitive. Listen and follow. And so that uh, began the process of me beginning to visit Course in Miracles groups, um, starting around uh, 19 late 1980s and 1991 when I began my travels, just where I was invited or where Jesus guided me. So like that last 10 minutes of that course group was, was Jesus' is doing, like you need to go there. David would not have gone there, walking in the last 10 minutes of the Course of Miracles group, that would have been you know, out, of, out of bounds. But I was simply to listen and follow. And then uh, I went through was guided into some relationships which really flushed up a lot of dark stuff, you know, because relationships are such a strong form of mirror. And then I had another hermitage experience around 1995. Um, and that, I was able to sink into the silence because it wasn't David trying to be silent. The personality self is part of the problem. It's not our divine self. So when our personality self has its wants and desires, and we try to do the spiritual journey as a personality self, the ego is like sitting back like a little spider in the web, saying, very good, keep up with that practice. A few more uh, decades or centuries and you might uh, make a dent in me. And I was like, no, that's not, uh, I need to let go of, of, the, of some of the spiritual practices even, and the, the ego that is desiring uh, to do the practices has to be let go of as well. But by the mid-1990s, I was, it's more like the silence found me, uh, instead of me trying to find the silence. Like I just prepared myself to open up. And so, rolling forward a bit, just to give you a little background, uh, around I had people showing up, wanting to be my students in more of a traditional way, teacher-student thing, and gurus and that, which I worked with them very intimately in the 1990s. And then in 2003, I had been working with a woman who was working with the Course since uh, early on, like around 19, 1987, I think, is when she started. But she was very stagnant with the Course. She wasn't reaching any experiences or depth with it. And a friend said, why don't you go see David? And she would come to my kitchen table and listen to quite a few hours of 
talks and gatherings that I've done with Willows. Nowadays, they put them on MP3 players and go off to a, a retreat. In those days, she was using cassette tapes, uh, which we had recorded some of the gatherings with. And she would listen for hours, and then she would come and visit me with the question of the day. And then we would join together in presence, and her question of the day would be answered. And then she would get a song from the angels. Uh, sometimes a two and three part harmony song, you know, quite uh, you know, extravagant and so forth. They were really beautiful songs. Welcome. <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> the gang's all here. <laughs> yeah. Let's see the dogs are looking at them. Who it is? <laughs> Another picture. <laughs> Just basking in the love and the peace, right in the center of the circle. So um, anyway, she would come and she would have this joining with me, and she would receive like a download, almost like a, a, a whole song, kind of like Mozart would get his pieces of music, like in a direct like download, a whole piece. She would get the whole song, and she would record it into a, a little dictaphone. And if there were harmonies, she would sing the harmonies in, and then she would go back. And eventually, she was getting those songs so fast that it wasn't like a several songs. They kept coming like getting biscuits out of the, the oven or cookies. After a period of weeks, she would have amassed enough to put together a CD. Not a typical CD with 12 or 15 songs. 20. 20 songs, and then that was the first city, then the second, then the third, then the fourth, then the fifth, and the sixth, and the seventh, and the eighth, and that. You know, just, it was like huge. It was a whole pathway to God. It just came through our joining, and this woman was singing all these songs from the angels. And uh, I can attest to some of these songs. They're quite beautiful. It's like a whole pathway to God. So, I was basically sharing them freely on the internet, saying, if you want three songs from the angels, you know, we'll mail you a CD. And a woman from Argentina wrote and said, I would love to have some of these songs, but I live in a faraway country, I'm down in Buenos Aires, and I don't think you can afford to just send me these things, but if you could afford it, I would have liked to have a CD. So I told Resta, and by that time she had recorded maybe four or five full CDs probably like over a hundred songs. And so she wrote to the woman and said, yes, we gladly will send you the whole set. Just give us your postal address, and someday we may make it to other countries, we may make it to Argentina. And then at one point, she basically, I was walking through the little peace house where I live, and, and uh, rest of, showed me the email, and the email said from this woman, thank you for sending me this, uh, this CDs, and so happy to hear that you are coming to Argentina. And I said to rest of what did you write in that email? Uh, what did you tell her? And she said, well, I just put that someday we might be willing to go to other countries. And she wrote, so happy to hear you're coming to Argentina. So rest and I started off on a trip, a six-week trip, uh, shortly thereafter. And I met a man on the first stop. Uh, named David, and I was taking a walk in the woods, and I was telling him the most different things about my life, and he said, have you ever thought about going to other countries? And I said, no, I really have not given it that much. I'm mean, being used in the United States and Canada. And he said, I think you're supposed to take this show on the road, and I think you're supposed to go to other countries with this joy and this love and this message. I said, well, if it's in the plan, I'm sure it will make itself obvious. I said, we did have this lady who just wrote to us and said, so happy to hear that you're coming to Argentina. And he said, Argentina? Oh, I love Argentina. I go all around the world. That's one of my favorite places, Buenos Aires and this and that. And he said, actually, I can see that happening. I said, oh, really? And he said, I'm a businessman and I travel for pleasure and business, but I rack up all these frequent flyer miles, and I entered this contest uh, with the South American Airlines. Uh, the grand prize was one million 
frequent flyer miles. 